Hello again, Victor here from Rescue Studio. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at this little thing. The Two Notes Torpedo Capture X. Normally, I would go straight into some audio, but in this video, it's quite important that you know what this little thing does before we get into that. It is a reactive load box, a virtual cabinet, an alternator, and an IR loader. And what that means is that all the guitar you're gonna be hearing in this video is gonna run through this little box instead of my cabinet down here. Uh, there will be no microphones you're gonna be hearing except the Lewid LCT440 Pure that I'm talking into. And other than that, this is the guitar you're gonna be hearing. While I'm holding the Captor X, I think it would be a good idea to run you through the I.O. on this thing. On the back of the unit, you have your standard outputs. You have your left output and your right output. That's a stereo output. You can either have a stereo out or you can record the virtual cabinet and the DI signal at once. Then you have your ground lift. You have your speaker out. You have a three-way attenuator switch uh, for three levels of, of attenuation, uh, a speaker in, and a little fan that I haven't seen it run, but I suppose it would run if the unit gets hot. On the front, you have, you're gonna see, see this in a second. Behind this little grill, there's two LEDs, a white LED and a red LED. And if it's red, your recording is gonna be too hot. You then have your headphone output, if you just want to hear the output directly from the Torpedo Captor X. Uh, you have a preset knob, you have a, what is this, that is the output level, and that is going to be a voicing, that's going to be more like a tone control kind of thing, and a space, uh, and of course I'll be covering all of that later. Uh, you also have your in-level high, low depending on how loud your amp is. Uh, you can run 100 watts at eight ohms into this thing. Um, and I think that should cover the unit itself. I am at least gonna be showing you some of the features in the software, but the opportunities with this little box is pretty much endless. If I had to go over every feature in the Captor X, I would sit here for hours on end. I'm not gonna do that and you're probably, you wouldn't watch it if I did that. So I'm gonna show you some things. I haven't played too much with it. So you're gonna hear my impressions as well. Uh, and I think we should just get some tones. So let me plug this bad boy in and uh, I'll see you in a second. <laughs> Alright guys, so I have gone ahead and I have hooked up my Stratocaster to my Laney Cuphead amp. And as you can see in that camera over there that I just got from my good friend Michiel. Hello Michiel. But as you can see over in that camera over there, there's the Torpedo Captor X in all its glory. That nice little LED showing that the signal is nice and clean. Um, I have also gone ahead and loaded up just some some random thing that I thought sounded good. 
uh, all the reverb you're hearing is not from the Laney Cuphead. Actually, it is from the Capture X over there. In the software, you can control everything on the unit itself except for the attenuation and the ground lift. Um, pretty much anything else is accessible from the software. That means everything you see here on the front on the Capture X is in the software and you can control that in the software, including the presets. Regarding presets, how many is there? Is there more than six that's on the front here? Yes, there is. I think there's 128 available presets you can store on the unit. If you want to access more of the first six, you have to consult the software side of things. I haven't tried hooking it up to a computer. I've only tried it on the iPad, but that works great. So what is the setup right now? You can see here, if I press the little I button up here, I have the green art C uh, enclosure, which is, according to two notes, it's a vintage Marshall enclosure. Uh, you can see all the microphones available on that particular speaker. Uh, I have it mic'd up with a dynamic 57 and a ribbon 128. I'll let you guys guess what microphones those are. Uh, but as you can see, you have a bunch of different microphones available. You can choose whether or not you want to drag the microphones around like this, or you can choose to go down here and touch the axis and the distance control. Uh, and you can do that on both of them, of course. You have a bypass and a mute. I don't know what's the difference between bypass and mute, but... Uh, I guess that's the thing. I think maybe, maybe actually, that's uh, how you record DI. Uh, I don't know though. I don't know. Uh, and then of course you have a face switch. Then you can switch between having the mic position in front or in the back. Uh, you can do that on both of them. That switches to that lovely view. Um, you have a little gate which is the reason, the sole reason why I chose to play a Stratocaster in this video. That is because I'm hoping I can crank my amp up and get a little bit of hum so we can check out the gate. I'm gonna turn that off for now. And then you have your output section, you have balance, tightness. I forgot I have to touch the screen so you guys know where I'm actually at. And then you have over here, you have, you can choose between stereo or mono, your output level, which is also on the front over here. That is the out level over here. Yep. And you have a voicing switch, which is again, the tone kind of thing you also have over here. And you have the space knob that is here. You can see it's turned all the way down on the unit itself and it's turned midways up in the um, in the software. But that is simply because on the unit itself, the, the knobs are not motorized. I wouldn't expect that, but if I do turn this knob over here, you can see in the software that it's moving. So it works that way around, not the other way around. Then you have your post effects EQ, you have post effects enhancer and a reverb. Uh, the reverb, there's a lot of different areas uh, you can choose from. Studio A, Studio B, a lot of them. I'm gonna go through a couple of them, but the one you heard in the beginning was the cathedral setting. Then you of course have your presets up here. There's uh, presets on the, uh, on the torpedo itself and you can choose the, those here. As you can see, it says 42 GS2, and that is because this unit, this particular Captor X was used at 42 GS2, and I got the Captor X from my good friend Henning Pauli. You probably know the guy, HP42, he has 2,000, maybe 2,000, 4,000, 10,000, I, I don't even know, videos on YouTube. He's a maniac, he works like crazy, an amazing event. So thank you so much, Henning. And the last thing that may or may not be important on this side on the software is there's a tuna. I haven't actually tried that. Does it work? I suppose my E string is a little flat, but I'm guessing that's working just fine. It's, it's a tuner. Uh, I have a little tuna up here, a little clip-on tuna that I'm using instead, but 
it's there if you need it. Then down at the bottom you have caps and this is where things get interesting. This is where you find all your caps. There is one thing I dislike about this and that is you can't see the actual caps before you click on them. So if I see Brit 65O, I have no idea. I have no reference to what that particular cap is. Of course, you can just go back to this screen right here and you can just click these little arrows on the side of the cabinets and you can choose your cabinets like that. And then of course, press the I button up in the right corner and you can see exactly what you're dealing with. Right now, I am not hooked up with Wi-Fi. I am not hooked up with USB. I am hooked up with Bluetooth. If you press this little button down in the left hand corner, devices, you can see your Torpedo Capture X right there. And then if you press the more button on the other side of the screen, you have all these kind of things. All right, so let's get going with some tones. I'm going to dial the reverb a lot back right here. Um, let's hear what that sounds like. Nice and dry compared to what you had before, which was this. You can, of course, just turn that off and then there's no reverb at all. But I don't like recording without reverb or playing for that matter. I think I'm going to go through a bunch of mic combinations on this cap and then I'm going to keep the same two microphones whenever I find something I like uh, and then just switch through a bunch of caps. Like I said, the possibilities in this in this little unit is almost endless. So I'm not going to be covering everything that's uh, for you to discover. But anyway, this is the the green art C um, with the dynamic 57, the ribbon 121 in studio A and maybe get a little more wet because why not? <laughs> One thing I have to say that I actually forgot, that is that uh, this little cuphead, Laney cuphead is insanely loud. It's only 15 watts, but it's, it's insanely loud. I don't have the Captor X hooked up to the cabinet down here. There's no actual, uh, actual guitar in the room, as you can hear. That is uh, the Lewitt microphone right there that I have in front of me, the LCT 440 Pure. Thank you, Lewitt. Uh, and this is what the room sounds like. And I actually, I have the guitar turned up. I'm having signal in my in-ears right here. So you will be able to hear it if I remember to switch the tracks right. So one thing that I'm not going to cover in this video as well is going to be the three stages of attenuation on the back. But it is possible to half the volume of your cabinet and get it to almost nothing while still maintaining that tube thing that we all love and adore. The Laney Cuphead is actually blasted on full volume right now. So just to prove a point, if that was hooked up to the cabinet right now, I wouldn't be able to sit right here. But it's no problem at all. I'm getting all that tube saturation uh, directly into my audio interface. And that is what you're hearing. Anyway, let's get on with some sounds. So the first thing I want to do is actually try and turn on the gate. Uh, there's a little learn function here. I'm going to press that. I'm assuming that's just going to learn the threshold of the noise. So that should be gone in a second. Let's see. Was that it? Are you, are, are you serious? <coughs> Are you, are you serious? Is it that easy? There's no noise. Wow. That is actually incredible. 
And that's just a gate. If the rest of the software is that good, I don't even know. Just buy the damn thing just because of the gate. Um, let's try just switching through some microphones. Let's go with a double CND87. I have no idea actually what the CND87. Canada 87? I'm guessing Canada 87, but I actually have no idea. But this is what that sounds like. <laughs> Let's go to the BTL414. I, I'm pretty sure I know what that is. Then the ribbon 121. And the ribbon 160, that's going to sound something like this. And the, oh, I just jumped over the dynamic 57, which is going to be like this. I'm guessing heavily mid focused. And the dynamic 421, that is going to sound something like this. And I don't think I should be go to the dynamic base 20, but Let's hear what that sounds like. A lot of buttermen. And the dynamic bass 88. Oh, that's funny. I think I am going to stick with the Dynamic 57 and the Ribbon 128. I found that to be my favorite once when I just did a little test earlier. All right, so let's try and switch up some of the cabinets. But before we do that, let me just quickly go through the reverbs or the different environments, I should say. Uh, right now we're in Studio A and this is what Studio A sounds like. <laughs> You can turn up the dry and wet signal, which is also going to be turning the space knob all the way up. And that is what Studio A sounds like right out of the box. You can, of course, turn up the size. Make it sound something different, like something different. And yeah, of course, color is just going to be tone. Um, let's go to Studio B real quick. Uh, and this is what that sounds like with 50% on. And with the wet all the way up. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I like that. That's almost... That's almost slapback kind of thing. Let's go to basement with dry wet at 50%. Oh, that's funny. That sounds pretty much like a basement. Uh, I'm not going to record with that ever, but it sounds like a basement. And the loft at 50%. And at a hundred percent. And Hall A is going to sound something like this on fifty percent. Hall B on 50%. Now we're getting into territory that I really like. I like huge reverbs and hopefully I got this thing right and I'm recording in stereo. I was talking to Guillaume the other day, uh, the guy at Two Notes, and I was asking him if there was anything in particular he wanted me to showcase. And he was just like, just make sure to get it in stereo. So hopefully Guillaume, hopefully I got it in stereo. Otherwise, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I adore that sound. I could play that all day. The crypt is gonna be even bigger, I suppose. Or not. Let's go to the cathedral setting. This is the setting that you heard in the beginning. That is just up my alley. Probably not a hundred percent wet, but uh, let's. This is what that sounds like. Nope, I still like that. A little scratchy putts, but uh, that's the guitar, not the Captor X. Then we have the plate, which is, I'm not a huge fan of plates, so I'm probably gonna go through this really fast. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, not a big fan of plate. So let's just jump to the spring. And of course I am on the Strat and what is associated with the Strat and a spring reverb, you all know it. Sounds good, man. People over at Two Notes really outdone themselves with this one. Uh, the tile. Usually, I'm not a big fan of tile either. So, uh, but uh, let let let's hear what that sounds like. And all the way wet. And the chamber one on 50%. That's funny. I quite like that. And all the way wet, I am assuming this is going to be too much. I like that as well. It's funny. I'm probably not going to use that, but it's funny. And then there's a custom thing. I have no idea what that is. Is that just designing your... I'm guessing that's design your own reverb if that's what you want. All right, so we're back again. I had a little problem with my MacBook. There was a hard drive error, so all of the sounds were pretty much unusable. I've already shot this thing two times. This is the third time I'm gonna go over the, um, the cabinets. So hopefully, Hopefully this is gonna work. It's not the Captor X's fault. It's uh, it's my Mac. It's just an old 2015 MacBook Air I'm recording on. Uh, but anyway, since we left off, I did go ahead and I went back to the Hall A environment and I did go to the Caps side of things. I went to Guitar, I pressed the 112 and the B Deluxe. Uh, you can see here there's a little info on the cabinet and all of the corresponding microphones that is available for that particular cap. So this is going to be the Dynamic 57 and the Ribbon 121 on the B Deluxe. The Laney Cup into the Captor, which is emulating the B Deluxe. This is what that sounds like. <laughs> I'm going to go over these quick because I've already shot it three times. So let's just quickly jump to the next one. The next one is the Vibro V30. And the next one is the Eddie. And these are the microphones. And the next one is the egg beater with those microphones right there. And the next cabinet is the forest cabinet and that sounds something like... The next cabinet is going to be the Free Rock 2. And 
those are the microphones. Then we have the Jazz 120. Then we have the Jubal Green with those microphones. And we have the Rack Hero JP. And then we have the Silver Gen. And the Voice 30. And then you have the What Fancy. And then we have the Brit, Brit 650, excuse me. And then we have the Angle Pro 30. And the Angle Vintage C. And the Brit Vintage C. And the Caliph Standard C. And then we have the Fastback 25. Then we have the Fortin UK 30. And the green try. And then we have the green art C, which is one of my favorites. And we have the Kerosen. And the Rand NB412. The Strongback. And we have the Tanger 30C. And 
and the the one which is going to be the last one So that is all the caps. Then we come into the bass category and I'm not going to play those because this is not a bass, as you probably may know. Then one last thing is there's an EQ over in the top right. I'm not going to go over that because it's just an EQ. You know what an EQ does. Then you have the enhancer, which is basically just a deeper EQ. <laughs> It sounds amazing, it's a good EQ, or whatever that does, it definitely sounds good. I think I'm gonna call the video here. As I said in the beginning, there's so much in this little unit that it's hard to comprehend. I went over the, I think, 32 cabinets, but as I said, it's an IR loader. That means it's open software, so anyone who wants to make their own IRs, or you bought your own, IR package somewhere, you can load your own IRs into there. And you can also get IRs from two notes themselves. Thank you to Henning for giving me the Captor X. Thank you to Michiel for the camera that's been filming the Captor X this entire time. And thank you to Guillaume and his team for making such an amazing product. If you happen to have a tube amp, I would definitely consider buying one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye. See you guys.